there have been a few questions about this kind of goofy quiz um, that I had you guys do for week two. And just a couple notes, we're going to move back the due date for things this week um, because it seems like you guys might need another day. So check D2L, I'm going to update those dates for the week two stuff and that will push back week three's due dates also. So just keep that in mind. Um, we can be flexible this summer within a couple of days uh, in, in reasonable fashion. The class will end and we have to move along week to week, but we will kind of be flexible with each other within a couple of days. So I want to do one example of this uh, proof exercise I was trying to get you guys to do. The idea is just to take a proof that's already been done that doesn't have any justification and break it down with more steps and more justification. And this is just for your own learning and um, so I'm, I'm not too worried about grading. Probably you'll get a fine grade if you just submit it. Um, so, so I just want to see um, if you learn something and you're able to understand what's happening with each of these steps. So a file that you definitely want to have open while you're completing this is the key logical equivalences and connectives. Okay, you're going to want to have those logical equivalences ready so you can try to figure out what's changing from piece to piece and which uh, justification would be um, would be happening for each section or each step that we take. So, so let me talk through, this is number 30 from, uh, so you had three of them to go through and and break down more and justify and so I'm going to talk through just a few of these steps here to uh, help you understand what I'm looking for. So number 30 we're trying to show, we're trying to prove that some compound proposition is a tautology. So it looks like we're you know starting on the left hand side and um, applying the uh, equivalence that P implies Q is logically equivalent to not P or Q. So hypothesis implies conclusion is logically equivalent to the negation of the hypothesis or conclusion. So keep that in mind. Um, but let's just, yeah, let's just go step by step, see if we can follow along here and that, I mean, you're, you're basically just going to be rewriting what's already done. But the only difference is you're going to also be writing the justification for each step. And all I'm looking for with the justification is just some logical equivalence that you're applying that's in the list of those key logical equivalences. And so obviously there's different ways to approach this problem, but since the work's already done with, for you, go ahead and just follow along um, with, with the given steps that you have. So this first step that I'm writing down, this is just our beginning point. I'm just copying down the left-hand side, beginning, need an extra in there. So this is the left-hand side of my problem, okay? So I'm just copying down. Now, the next step, and, and while you're doing this, you kind of have to reason through this. Is the next step reasonable, or is there too many things happening at once? And I think for the most part, each of the steps is broken down pretty well for you already, okay? So let's see what's happening from here to here. So I see two things that look different. I see this implication change to an or, and I see that there's a negation. So that tells me that I'm using this logical equivalence here. So I'm going to go ahead and write that down. So what I did is I looked at this and I said, this is my hypothesis, this is my conclusion. So I negate the hypothesis. And then or conclusion. Okay, so I'd write down that first step, and then all I do is just write down my justification here. So I'm going to write down, write down my justification here is that P implies Q is logically equivalent to not P or Q. All right, so let's see what happens next. Okay, now what's happening? is this negation is being distributed. So we've got De Morgan's laws happening here. So I'm going to go ahead and do that step, but instead of just writing down that step, I'm going to add in the justification. So 
So I know that what I did was just take two propositions joined by and and negate both of them, change that middle one to an or. So I used De Morgan's laws and that's just that the negation of P and Q is logically equivalent to the negation of P or negation of Q. Okay. So now let's see what happens. Okay, now this is an example where there's quite a few things happening here, more than I would like to see. Um, what's happening, it looks like there's De Morgan's laws happening on this piece and on this piece and double negation. Okay, so only only one justification per step, okay? Don't get crazy on your steps. I promise you it's it's for the better in the end, okay? So what I'm gonna do is split that into a couple of steps. So I'm gonna apply De Morgan's over an or. So we've got De Morgan's law. If I negate two propositions joined by or, I'm gonna negate both pieces and change it to an and. So that I'll apply on this first and second piece. So not P and not Q. Or now I'm going to write not not P because I'm going to need another justification here for any alteration to that. Okay. Or Q or R. Okay, so now I'm going to use double negation. Double negation. And you don't have to write De Morgan's double negation. All I'm looking for on each step is the general form of that logical equivalence that you're using. So whatever appears in that key logical equivalence document, um, that's what I want you to write down for the justification, okay? And make sure you're clear on what's justification and what steps, okay? All right, so now let's see what happens next. So we're able to get here, we got there, and then it looks like we've got a few rearranging going on, right? It looks like Q and R changes places, change places, and then it looks like we have some associative stuff going on. So what I'm going to do to get to that point eventually, I'm going to break it down to a couple steps. So I'm going to use the commutative law for or to switch the order of Q or R. So I know that the order that I do the or does not matter as long as I've got the same operator and I'm not moving more than one thing at a time. Okay. And I'm definitely not trying to waste your time, so use your judgment and, and do what you think is best here, but I do think it's a good practice just to uh, write this out and take your time. So associative laws, I'm going to write, uh, let's see, if I've got P or Q or R, this is logically equivalent to P or Q or R, because somehow I want to group this R together, so I'm going to use associative laws to do that. So not P and not Q, or P and not R, because I want to put that R with the negation of R, so that's why I'm trying to group those together. And then it looks like I've got some distribution happening. So after I group that R by the piece I want it with, looks like I'm distributing uh, over an AND with an OR. So I would just write out that distributive property that I'm using here. So in this next step, I'm using the fact if I take P and Q or R, this is the same, and this is all on that key logical equivalence sheet, okay? So that's where you're going to find all this stuff, okay? So I'm taking OR R and distributing it to both pieces. P OR R and not R OR R, okay? Okay, now I have some work to do with that not R and R. I know that that's logically equivalent to true, 
So that's how we got there. If I take, and that's another uh, equivalence that's on those that sheet, if I take P or not P, or if I take not P or P, I'm going to get a true statement. And that's just because P and not P are always going to have opposite truth values. With the OR operator, you only need one to be true to have an overall true statement. So I'm going to have P or R and true or Q. Okay, and looks like just one more step here that I'm going to show you, and it's not quite done, but hopefully it gives you a little bit of direction. Um, if I take a statement and true, this statement's going to take over, right? The truth value of this statement's going to take over because for an and statement, a statement involving and to be true, both pieces have to be true. So um, what I'm using on this step here is that if I take P and true, it's just logically equivalent to P. So what happens is I sort of eliminate the not true part because that P or R part takes over. Okay, so hopefully that gives you a little bit of a better idea. It's not quite done, but notice I only added in like one or two steps, no big deal. Um, so I just copied down the steps and justified each one just with a, a key logical equivalence. So nothing crazy, um, but I think it does involve trying to interpret what happens from step to step, and I think that can be time consuming. So. It's just a matter of recognizing what's different from step to step and, and what key logical equivalents would allow you to do that. Okay, So hopefully that helps. Um, let me know if, if you want to talk through any more. Thanks.